I'm finally wearing my old man suspenders. Okay. Oops. Pure pomegranate juice. They say it's pure. Uh, fresh pressed, not from concentrate. Yeah, but see, let me say something. I first learned about pomegranate juice in Cape Town. Uh, this, anyway, they had real pomegranate juice. And what the person told me, if you have real pomegranate juice, you cannot take it like regular juice. In fact, you only take maybe, I don't know, fourth of a glass, something like that. This is not real, real. I mean, the real kind. Now, pomegranates, as you know, they're all in um, Afghanistan or whatever they have in Afghanistan. Got the poppies, they also got pomegranate. But it's more profitable profitable for them to do the poppies. But for pomegranate juice, it, like I said, it's usually darker than this, too. You're only supposed to take about this much a day. <laughs> so a bottle like this, I'm going to tip a little bit more. But I think this has some kind of... Wait, 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 wait. There's some kind of water in it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me see what is this. First press. Ingredients. Certified whatever grown and harvested on corns with the natural organic programs. Not nice, whatever it is. Compounded fertilizers. Okay, great. No pesticides. Herbs, blah, blah, blah. All liquid juices, blah, 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 blah. Pesticides, da, 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 pasteurize. Ooh. Sealed. Da, 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 da. Oh, independently. Oh, that's that thing. What's it? Juices. Da, da, da. I'm trying to look for the ingredient thing. I don't see it. It's got to be around here, someplace. Well, I have to look another time. Oh, ingredients. <laughs> organic pomegranate juice. This is a natural, full strength organic pomegranate. <laughs> Hey, I, the one in Cape Town is more full strength than this, I can tell you, because you can feel it. Anyway, take a pomegranate juice, little thing. Here we go. It's strong. Ooh. Anyway, it's good for blood pressure. Really, it's supposed to regulate your blood pressure. But you'll figure it out some other day. Oh, here we go. Um, receipts. Uh, have another. I, I like this. The receipts is cool, but here's the word I like because I like I like to be big fans of it. Bonafides. Bonafides. Of course, I'm here, and uh, the desk has moved to Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia, for now. And I was looking at stuff that I had because all my all my stuff, all my books are there. Now this, I got something in the mail. This is a long time ago. This was in. It was only ninety cents for this. This was uh, April. April, September, what is it, September or something, September 20, 1988, 1988, I got this in the mail, and these are like, whoop, what's that, oh, I'd look at that, hey, look at this, oh, it's the long dream, another time for the long dream, that you write, let me see, these are side from a mystic wind, uh, a thing that I wrote, this is, uh, I didn't have it in there. Some other time for that. I know it's around someplace. Anyway, this was a journal that was put out. Uh, Black American Literature Forum, uh, Indiana State University. Um, but the, the mystic went off. Let me take this back out. These are sides. In other words, I contributed to this literary forum because I was working at the time on some Henry Dumas stuff. Uh, and this is a. Uh, the sides, you know, the, here we go. Uh, a mystic wind, Anthony Swan, right? A mystic wind, uh, what it is, uh, uh, because uh, I know Loretta Dumas, I was talking about stuff, and, and, and even, um, he, he was in the whole Larry Neal, black, um, uh, you know, black literary movement, you know, Larry Neal, Larry was the one that brought uh, Mayor Baraka or Leroy Jones at the time up to Harlem, and, 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 but Henry Dumas was on the scene. But they would say, he was like, come through, do something, and then leave. It was like a wind coming through. So I call this piece a mystic wind because it was a piece that I adapted from his um, poetry. And I, from this po first poetry, this is his first poetry book, play Ebony Play Iodry, poetry by Henry Dumas. Oh, 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 I forgot to say. I say Dumas only because what Loretta told me is that when they got married, when they was at the clerk, clerk's thing, maybe he was messing with the person, they said, what's your name? And he said, Henry Dumas. It's the first time she heard Dumas because it's like um, Dumas, what you would say, but in French it's supposed to be Dumas. They cut out the S. Anyway, so I was looking at this here. 
I, I started uh, a mystic wind, no date, no time, this space. The works of Henry Dumas adapted to the stage by um, Anthony Snow. Oh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud Karim Hakala, he's my director, and the HD people. So I guess we must have performed this. I can't remember. This is like, this was like, this, this came out, this came to me in the 80s, but this was when I was in graduate. This was like the late 70s. So I was looking through the, uh, through the thing, and then I realized the table of contents, you know, have these like uh, uh, highlighted uh, red, um, um, yellow things, like this whole blue song, like cut this whole thing out. So this must be this, the, the poetry that I use to, um, well, let's cut out, well, let's cut out, well, let's go. Oh, certainly dropping, I don't know what that says. Uh, but, but all this is, is cut out. I don't want to go through the whole thing. Anyway, so, so um, let me just read this. Anthony Sloan is a poet, playwright, and media personality in New York City where he hosts No Mo Radio. No Mo Radio. Where's my No Mo Radio? Oh, hold it. No Mo Radio. <laughs> um, a weekly program of interviews, music, and commentary on WBIFM. A Mystic Wind is an excerpt from a longer script adapted of the poetry and prose of Henry Dumas. That's what this is. Now, here's what I want to do right now. I hope this is going to be right. I don't care if it's right. I'm going to put it back in there like this. Valuable. I'll make it not too high. Um, now, let's see. What am I doing? I'm, well, I'm supposed to read it. I can't put these back on. I'll tell you about The Long Dream another time. Another audio drama I did. This is the cast. Shh. I'll tell you about that another time. Yeah, here, Buddha. Hold this. Hold on to this. Hold on to this, Buddha. I told you hold on to this. Come on. Ah, Buddha want to cooperate. Well, what time is it? Let me find out what time it is in South Africa. Oh, it's like uh, 20 after 6 in the evening. Yeah, maybe I'll call my wife. Anyway, um, so I'm looking through this. I want to read a poem. I picked it out already. Called Root Song. This is what I would call an ADOS poem, but a, I'm sorry, not ADOS, a lineage poem, right? Here it goes. And look, I'm not the best, I'm, a, I'm not the best reader in the world, so just be patient. I'll try to, you know, be cool, right? The poem starts here, root song, and it goes to this whole page and up here. So if you have to tune out because you can't stand what I'm saying, just tune out. Here we go. Uh, root song. Once when I was tree, flesh came and worshiped at my roots. My ancestors slept in my outstretched limbs and listened to flesh, praying and entreating on his knees. Once when I was free, African sun woke me up green at dawn. African wind combed the branches of my hair. African rain washed my limbs. African soil nourished my spirit. African moon watched over me at night. Once, when I was tree, flesh came to sacrifice at my foot. Flesh came to preserve my voice. Flesh came honoring my limbs, drums and canoes and mass and cathedrals and temples of the ancestor gods. Now flesh comes with metal teeth with chop sticks, with chopping sticks, with fire launches, and flesh cuts me down and enslaves my limbs to make forts, ships, pews for other gods, stockades, flesh pens, and crosses hung high to sacrifice gods. Now flesh laughs at my charred and beaten flame. Sorry. Now flesh laughs at my charred and beaten frame, discarding me in the mud, burning me up in flames. Now flesh listens no more to my voice of the spirits talking through my limbs. Flesh has grown dull at the ears now. Flesh has grown pale and lazy. Flesh has sinned against the fathers. If flesh would listen, I would warn him. And the spirits are displeased. 
If flesh would listen, I would warn him that the spirits are displeased. If flesh would listen, I would warn him that the spirits are displeased and are planning what to do with him, but flesh thinks I am dead, charred, and gone. Flesh thinks that by fire he can kill, thinks that with metal teeth I die, thinks that chaining me in alien temples with new gods carved upon my skin, thinks that all the voices linked from root to limb are silenced, thinks that by cutting me down, I will sing and dance no more, but flesh is lazy and clogged with fat. Flesh does not know that he did not give me life, nor can he take it away. That is what the spirits are singing now. That is what the spirits are singing now. That is what the spirits are singing now. It is time that flesh bow down on his knees again. Henry Dumas. This is T from the Pattersons taking the trench to bed. Letting you hear what I only suspect from a desk of the A-D-O-S. North American descendants of chattel slavery. <laughs>